Hi, my name is Sean Olson. In this video, I'm going to show you some practical examples of using Wallroom Pro and Substance Maps and some of the new features with exporting uh, arbitrary textures and VTF. So in this example, we have a very dummy scene here. Um, it's composed of a bunch of Corvex geometry that we'll export as world geometry for source. And what we want to do is create some textures from scratch to put on this scene. So first I'm going to show you what a substance map is. So we're going to add a substance to this green area right here. We're going to use this substance map. Now a substance map is a procedural bitmap texture basically is how you can think of it. And 3ds Max comes with a lot of them. This one is the brick wall 02 that comes with 3ds Max and it has a lot of parameters that can change how this brick looks. I'm actually going to uncheck use real world scale for this. There's a bug with substance maps that have that. So I'm going to actually create a new texture here to show you how to create one. Substance map, load substance. You'll find it in your substance folder under the textures and we had um, brick wall 05 I believe. Nope. Let's get brick wall 2. There we go. That's one. We're going to drag this out and we're going to pipe this into a standard materials diffuse map. And we're going to pipe the normal into the bump. Now you'll notice it creates these intermediary nodes that are output nodes. That's fine. And now we're just going to drag this onto our object. To see it in the viewport, we need to select our material and hit the option that's show in viewport. Now, as you can see here, we have this tiling texture. And because it's a substance map, it has a lot of procedural controls. For example, I can say that it's older and it will give it a little bit of a different look. I can change the size of the bricks if I want to and various other aspects of it and it's dependent on the substance and you can create your own substance with different tools by algorithmic but right now we're just going to use the built-in substances that are part of 3ds max so now we're going to apply some of these other substances that i had created to these other objects i want to use this tiling texture here concrete to put on the sidewalk here so again, we're going to pipe this into a standard maps, standard materials diffuse. And the normal will go into the bump. We want to preview this material. We're going to pipe this onto that. So now we have this tiling texture. And again, because it's a substance, we can change various aspects of it. We can even change the color, um, how many tiles it has. Now we'll do two there, and we'll leave it at that for now. For the ground, or for the driveway area, we're going to use this old cracked asphalt. We're again going to go here and create a standard material with that in the diffuse. The normal is going to go in the bump, and we're going to apply that to the concrete. Again, we want this to, material to appear like that. Now in this case we want the tiling different. This is a Corvex object so its UVs are controlled here. So I'm going to do 256. Now let's do 128. There we go. That's good for now. Now we're going to go to this object and it uh, is also a Corvex object. So what I'm going to do here is create a multi-material for this object. And let's see here. We also want to um, use the material ID by the splines. That's good. Go back up to the top of this. And I'm going to get this material that it made. And I want to just go in here and start putting these substance maps into the slots where I did have checker textures. So for this door area, I want some corrugated iron. There we go. And for 
this front area. I wanted to use this concrete. And for this side area over here, I'll just go ahead and reuse the brick texture that we already made. So this gets us to the point where we have a small set here and we want to export these textures and brushes. So at this point, what we should do is let's clean up some of our nodes here and get rid of things that we're not using. So I'm going to delete some of these textures. I'm going to get rid of, set this number down to three, just to make this easier. Get rid of things that we're not using. And now we need to rename our materials. And to do that, we'll rename this one. We'll name it substance slash concrete tiles one copy this to make it easier down here I'm going to call this one substance bricks one name this one substance steel one concrete tiles we got that one named and we're going to name this one asphalt one Remember, when you're exporting materials for brushes, the name of the material is both the path and the name of the material itself. So this will go in a folder named Substance. And the VMT, the material's name, will be Asphalt 1 in this case. Now to make things easier, we're going to go and rename these output nodes. And for each one, I'm going to name the diffuse the same as the material name. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to for convenience and you'll want to name the normal something else. I'm going to just add an underscore normal to any of those. So I'm going to go up here to steel one, copy this to the output node name, and again name this normal. I notice I had a tab here in these, so tabs invalidate the names of things. So be careful if you have tabs or extra spaces. This just makes everything a lot easier. So I have all these as I want now. So now I'm not going to move away the material editor for a moment here. And I'm going to select all of the geometry in the scene. Four objects there. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit wall worm, wall worm materials, and I'm going to hit give object mats plus text WW materials. Now this option, the second part of this, the text WW materials, only works if you have Wallworm Pro installed. So what happened here is the material editor, if we go back to it, all of our materials now have a bunch of these source shader properties, including the, the shader type, which we have light map generic by default, and a bunch of settings that we can change in here. But that's really not what we're interested in right now because we're going to go look at the output nodes. If we double click these you'll see that they now have a bunch of custom attributes that include the compression level that to use on this and various other VTF export settings. Now what we're going to do here is go through and add the normal use normal map on all of the normals here. So the other part of this is the path to the bitmap is defined here. And by default, when this is generated, it uses the name. So that's why we, it was easier to go in and um, add the name to the output node of where this will be. Now the exporter is going to make this as this bitmap. It's going to render it out. It's going to create a TGA and then export it into a VTF with this path. Another thing to note is that when you have run this materials function right here and it creates all of these nodes, when it's created, it automatically detects the dimension of the underlying bitmap. In this case, it was a substance map. And the substance is set to use a texture size. And right now, it's set at 1024. 
and that is why it gathered the dimension of 1024. If it had been a bitmap or some other size of substance, it would have used whatever dimensions it found. However, if I want to export this as a different size bitmap into VTF, I can just change the dimensions here. There are various other aspects to these VTF properties. One of them I'm going to point out now is you can reuse this texture in any arbitrary slot. So for example, if I wanted this diffuse map to also be part of the self illume texture, for example, I would just click this option here and it would also use this bitmap in that texture. And that's a way for you to add arbitrary textures to your VMT. So now we're going to go and actually export these textures. They've never been in source yet, but they're about to be. So I have all of these objects selected. I want to do materials and I'm going to export brush textures. It's going to list all of these. You're going to see where they're all going to output to. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and export. It's going to take a second here. And you'll notice that if you're familiar with the older, the standard export in Wallworm, this dialog is slightly different because this is using VTF CMD provided by Nemesis. So now I'm going to export this into source just to look at it in Hammer. Export scene as VMF. Call this substance test one. So now let's preview our scene inside Hammer. And let's look around here and look. We have a bunch of uh, materials and textures that never existed before. And this all came straight from uh, substance maps inside 3ds Max. Go back to Max. And if we needed to make any kind of change on any of these, say we wanted um, these, mess around with some of the substances here. Let's go to this concrete. And maybe we needed it to have less cracks. Go back here and change this to uh, one. So we have less cracks. Um, the damage scale, we could bring this down to 10. Make it look a little bit different here. Various different aspects to it. We can change the contrast of it a little bit. Just make it a little bit more drastic so we can see this when we re-export it. So at this point, if I wanted to re-export this texture, I can actually do this inside of the substance node here. Render it out and export it with this button here. And as soon as this is done, we can see, if we look at it in Hammer, you can see that the texture is now a lot darker and we changed it um, pretty much on the fly here. Of course, you don't even need to use Hammer with Wallworm and Wallworm Pro, but um, we're just demonstrating here because most uh, of the source users are familiar with using the hammer. So a couple more tips to point out. Not all maps will render out with this button correctly. Substance maps and bitmaps all work, but some maps, and we'll just create one here just to see here. We'll use camouflage, which is a blur map. So to show you what I'm talking about, We'll just add something here with this type of material just to show you. And we'll add a prism. And we want to generate mapping coordinates on this object. We're going to change this to add this into a standard material. The diffuse. Display this in the viewport and put this on our object here. And to also demonstrate something about using and applying these uh, textures to models. We'll turn this into a model. So let's give this a camo plage one. And we're gonna put this one in example slash camouflage one. And that's what we're gonna do for this. Just like we did before, we're gonna apply the wall worm uh, material and texture. So hit wall worm materials add wallworm mats plus text. So it's gonna add those in here. So now we'll notice that it has a VTF with, that's where it's gonna to output to. Because it was did not have any physical dimensions, it just gave it a default 512 by 512, that's fine. Now we're gonna go back to our material, and this is important. If it's going to be on a model, you need to check this option that says for model. And make sure the shader is appropriate for your model. In this case, now we have vertex lit generic. 
When it wasn't that, it was on light map generic, which is not valid. So if you over apply material, the wall worm settings to a, mo a material and your model doesn't have a, a correct material and texture, this may be the reason. Change it to a vertex lit generic shader. So we're gonna na we're gonna export this as a model. Let's rename this model to Camo Tent and let's open up all our model tools let's pick our model let's put this in test and where did I had this an example so I'm gonna put these all in example and I'm just gonna export this now when I export this we're gonna look at this in model viewer so you can see um, what the problem is that I was discussing a second ago with certain maps and I'll show you the workaround. If we look at this map or this model oh we didn't export our model. Let's export the model also. There we go. Camo tent and you see the textures all wrong. Okay. The reason is some maps um, don't render out automatically with the default functions in here so to get over that issue we can render this bitmap out manually by right clicking hit render map I need to choose a size that should match this size and export it to wherever my STK is in this case it was in this path so I'm gonna open that path and I want to save it as this I want to overwrite that hit OK and render and now it will be like this and at this point we open up the model viewer again and look at our guy here and now the material is correct so if you run into a problem in Wallworm Pro where you have a non bitmap node that has incorrect texture you'll have to manually render the TGA out and save it to the STK content folder and again you can do that by right clicking the bitmap node and hitting render map so let's just look at this in hammer let's export the scene as we just updated it export it as a VMF and we'll just export it to the same file name let's open the scene up in hammer and now you can see we have our uh, tent model here as well and so this is a model and everything else here is brushes and so now you can easily just export arbitrary textures out into source from 3ds max and again this was using wallworm pro not the standard wallworm functions uh, with the standard wallworm you still have to render things out always manually um, as TGAs and you have to uh, you only have limited control over the VTF options again my name is Sean Olson this has been a demonstration and using some of the tools in Wallworm you can learn more about me at my website seanolson.net and you can always get the latest Wallworm tools at wallworm.com thank you and have a good day